Hey, so welcome. This is the Meet the Faculty for Business Economics and Data Analytics for our PATH Day today. And we're joined by Maria Coquelin and Sharif El Aboudi. Uh, Maria is from the Business Department. And Sharif is from the Economics Department. So Maria, if it's cool with you, um, can you start and introduce yourself? And then just tell us what courses do you teach? Sure. My name is Maria Coughlin and I'm the chair of the Department of Business and Professional Studies. And the courses uh, that I teach are all business related, accounting uh, and other various management courses, uh, tax courses I teach. And then of course we offer other business courses in my department that are taught by my colleagues. Awesome, what programs are your courses part of? Uh, the programs that my courses are part of is our courses will lead to an associate's degree in business. Uh, and we also have on the, on the professional studies side of my department, we have um, degrees there in some of the professional studies like administrative management certificates. And, but prime, on the business side, uh, there, my um, area primarily is the business degree. And we have a number of what we call concentrations or majors, accounting, financial services, general business, management, and marketing. And those will all, if you, you may, if you wish to have one of those areas of specialty as part of your general business associate's degree. What has drawn you to this field? I think, well, my background is I have, um, I'm a CPA. So when I, when I attended college, I majored in accounting and I went into, I became a CPA initially. Um, and then I pursued my master's degree and I gravitated more towards analysis in that background. I spent a good number of years with Fidelity um, focused on financial analysis in Latin America and some product development there. I just owned business um, and I think I analysis behind it. I like working with business owners. It's just opportunity in business and, and I think that's really what what drew me to it was the opportunities. And what kind of students typically excel in your field? We have, a, you know, there's really not a typical student that excels. I would say a student who is interested in, you know, a student who wants to work hard, who perhaps has a natural in, interest in business. And that could be from any area. It could be entrepreneurial. It could be manage. It could be management. It could be human resource management. It could be analysis. You could be a person who likes to create financial numbers, or you could be a person who wants to analyze the numbers. Uh, you could be a person who wants to own your own business someday. So we have, I'm always uh, very impressed with, at least when I survey my students, I have at least half of my students are interested in being entrepreneurs here at the Community College of Rhode Island. So, um, that's all, you know, that's very, always very encouraging uh, with such a high number that are interested in someday running their own business. Uh, so I would, there's not a typical student. It's just someone who is interested in, in numbers and finance and um, understanding what numbers tell you about a business. And, and from there, there's any number of areas you can really pursue. Awesome. Thank you so much, Maria. Sharif, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us the department you work for and what courses do you teach? Sure. Uh, my name is Sharif Labudi. I just started actually CCRI this last semester during the pandemic. So uh, before that, I was 10 years uh, university uh, professor over, uh, overseas in Dubai. I, I taught at the uh, College of Business. Uh, I taught mainly economic courses, but I taught a number of other uh, business, actually, kind of what uh, in Maria's area. I taught uh, introduction to finance, uh, corporate finance, uh, international corporate finance. I taught money and banking. I taught um, uh, also uh, courses in uh, statistics and uh, and uh, 
mess for statistics as well. But my primary area, I, uh, I basically graduated from American University with a degree in economics and, uh, and then moved to do a master in economics from California State University in Los Angeles. Then I, uh, I worked um, in, in San Jose, California, Bay Area. Uh, as um, believe it or not, outside the area of economics, I worked as a senior system engineer and program manager in telecommunication. Um, and um, I was uh, laid off like a lot of people early. And uh, in the back, uh, that was uh, 2001. And I decided to do my PhD in economics. Uh, but I also coupled my PhD in political science. So kind of joined interdisciplinary field. Um, so I have that business background being uh, a system engineer and program manager in telecommunication. I also have the academic background where I taught uh, at California State University in Pomona, Cal in, in California. I taught political science classes uh, and I taught also economic classes at different community colleges. And of course, I moved in to teach a lot of courses in business. So I have that uh, background um, uh, and um, I uh, also was a contributor for CNBC television in the Middle East in Dubai, where I, uh, um, some of the students may want it. Of course, it's, it's not in English, <laughs> it's in uh, um, Arabic, but, um, but I also was actually in French uh, TV and other TV was uh, like a Sky News was English. So uh, I commented a lot of economic and business events uh, including, uh, I was following oil prices uh, mainly. Um, so uh, this is as far as just a brief background uh, where I come from and uh, academic. Quite the, quite the renaissance, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what programs are your courses part of? Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm part of the social science department. In fact, in, in most colleges, we are part of the uh, uh, what Maria is in uh, a college of business. But here I'm part of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, social science department where they have economics, geography, history, philosophy, political science, sociology. Um, we don't have a specific uh, kind of uh, a, a certificates or degrees specifically in economics, uh, but we, uh, we uh, work with other departments. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, because I'm pretty new to the college, we don't have an interdisciplinary field as yet. And I, I would love to, for that to exist actually between the College of Business and uh, also uh, the economic department, uh, the social science department. That would be a very interesting thing to try to have a marriage and uh, like maybe an interdisciplinary in business economics where, where students can get background in both areas. So that's as far as uh, programs and, and what are you doing? That's awesome. What has drawn you to this field? Um, it's interesting. Um, I actually was a mechanical engineer major at my undergraduate degree. And uh, then I, uh, I kind of uh, didn't do as well <laughs> in, in mechanical drawing, so I moved. I had interest. My father was more of a, into political science and he was an attorney, but he was involved in politics and stuff. So I started reading about it. And then economics and politics are married for goodness or worse, basically. So I, I liked economics and I started uh, a major in economics in undergrad. And um, so uh, I, uh, economics is more of, of, of what's happening was not just uh, on, on the business or the money side, but your, your personal life, really. A lot of decision we make in daily life, in daily, every second day, even, even spending time right now, I'm supposed to have, uh, like we had a, a general faculty meeting early this morning. I had two collaborate meetings. So I was managing, trying to manage time with very limited resources. Uh, but managing time is economics, managing the money that you have, managing your life, uh, priorities and so forth. So I really love the economics. Um, when I graduated, I could not get a job in economics per se. So I looked for jobs. I, I grew up in, in Southern California. So uh, I, uh, I was looking for a job and it's mostly technology in San Jose. So I started uh, learning about technology and I became Cisco certified system engineer and worked for an advanced telecommunication company. 
And, uh, but then came back to economics after I was laid off from that field after the, the crisis in, in the telecommunication back in early 2003. Um, and uh, and uh, because of my love to economics, I did my master at Cal State uh, LA, California State University, and then I pursued my PhD. But I, I really love uh, following finance news, economic news, business news. Uh, and uh, to a great extent, uh, I also have some interest in the stock market because I did my PhD dissertation about the uh, uh, the uh, institutional and uh, and also economic determinants of how big the stock market is. And if we follow the news recently, a lot of young people have actually uh, moved to try to understand what's happening. With I'm not sure if you heard the news about Reddit and and Wall Street and how the stocks and uh, for a game sub, you know, this this company is just crazy. A lot of people made tons of money, even young, young people in college, in uh, CCRI college age, you know, 18, 19, and 20. There's a guy from, uh, I guess it was 20 years old, that made some $600,000. <laughs> just crazy, but out of just a few thousand dollars. Uh, so, but uh, this is kind of what draw me into the field, really my love to... Um, of understanding uh, uh, money, uh, how things work, how you manage your time, uh, but also uh, in the area that uh, interests an average person, how, how do you really manage your life? Uh, time spent in your life is just, uh, it's just crazy how uh, the word opportunity costs in economics, uh, everything that you do in life, if you take freeway A or freeway B, try to get from Providence to Flangen or down to Newport, you know, you take the wrong road, you, it might cost you time and money and that's economics. So I guess I've overspoken here, but. No, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of students excel in your field? Um, Kind of what Maria was talking about. It's sometimes you get like a history student, believe it or not, and, and they do get an A in economics, you know? And sometimes someone for like a good background in accounting and get a C in economics. It's, it's really, it's not a criteria or someone is chemistry major might get a really good grade and someone's business not, not as maybe an average or below average. So it's really comes down to the student motivation and incentive. But of course, uh, if you just take statistics, I think uh, students with business background, like at least major in business and stuff, most likely tend to take economic courses and take it seriously. I'm, talk I'm not talking about a requirement, but the they take it because you want to transfer to a four-year college where some of the department in the business, like accounting or marketing, management, business, do require economics as one of their uh, requirements. So, um, so I would say in general, yeah, People whose business background, or at least major in business, do well in economics, but it's not a condition because I've had students from different psychology, history, and science that do very well. So uh, it's not, um, uh, you know, a, a sit and stone kind of uh, rule. Thank you so much. Uh, Maria or Sharif, is there anything else you would like to? tell students um, that are interested in either one of your fields besides what we already discussed? I guess for me, I would just always like to reiterate that, you know, our students tend to leave and they go to either another, a four-year co college or they pursue a career. And I think our students are are very happy with the level of education that they get at CCRI and the business courses. We as faculty are dedicated to teaching. We do not uh, spend time doing research, although that's very valuable. Here at CCRI, the faculty are focused on student success. And I, uh, we, have a very, we have a very wide breadth of experience in, in our business department of real world experience that they bring into the classroom. And we also collaborate with an advisory board uh, consisting of business owners and other representatives from large businesses. And that makes a very positive relationship with our students. So um, our students come to CCRI not knowing what area of business they may want to go into. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, and um, they are exposed to 
all the different areas, finance, marketing, entrepreneurship, ac accounting, management, and then they can make a decision from there um, where, they, where they want to head. So I guess that's something that um, the flexibility of the career path is something that I think is very appealing and the opportunities out there. Awesome. Sharif, is there anything else you want to yeah, I, I totally agree with what Maria is saying, and 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 it's um, it, it is very important to have this marriage between CCRI and the uh, business community, and specifically um, business community that offer opportunities for our students. So I think it is very vital. But we also to add what Maria is talking about, it, the the business world is changing a lot, and uh, and 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 now with the pandemic and COVID, even the work from home now becoming. Uh, a very important part. We call them uh, in economics, um, you know, it's a, it's a whole, almost one third of the workforce right now uh, are working um, from home. So it's important to know that big companies, especially in, in, in many fields, healthcare, education, and specifically even in technology, um, are letting students, young students from, from college uh, get certificates uh, like Google, for example, is one of them, Amazon and, and Microsoft, but also a lot of young startup companies, uh, with, which uh, I, I believe that a lot of students will have a, a great opportunity. They're, they want to hire students with extra um, technology or, uh, or career certification. So I believe an, an additional marriage between CCRI and specific um, companies that over those certificates, and I believe that exists uh, very uh, vividly in the healthcare area uh, at CCRI, but I think also in economics and I believe business, uh, uh, some of those companies offer uh, like free uh, a program, uh, six months where students can actually, even directly after high school can go and join. So it's not a competition to the college, but I believe it's complement. So we need to explore that area where uh, a regular college education is very helpful, like to measure in accounting and finance, marketing, business or economics, social science, history, science or, or healthcare. But you look for those specific uh, credentials, certificate that a lot of those companies now require and uh, allow students to be exposed in, a, a, in college is very important. Uh, because, uh, because otherwise students will miss out on what's happening now was was uh, this uh, new economy, and um, and I believe um, you know uh, uh, giving those skills to the students to be able to master uh, is very important because uh, a lot of those big companies recruit directly uh, anyone directly after high, even high school. Uh, they, 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 they try to give them this six months to two years program where they get certificates and they can get a job at, at those companies. So uh, if we um, maybe uh, 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 give the students exposure to those uh, companies and opportunities, um, uh, uh, I believe it's, uh, 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 it's, it's very critical to uh, success of students because the way education is delivered now is not just through a two-year college or four-year college, a lot of companies want to have uh, their workers uh, educated in their products and services and, and whatever they offer. So they have their educational program. And so we need to somehow find a way to incorporate those programs in, in not necessarily in our curriculum, but to have a joint kind of efforts uh, where a student can uh, have access uh, to those certificates not just directly by contacting those companies, but through the college as well. So that's why I give an advice to the students to see where they at, where their interest is, and, uh, and also let them know that their interest at age of 20 or 21, or even if you're joining late 40s or 50s, whatever, might change during the college time. So, uh, so keep your options open with what's out there and I was looking for uh, for the word. Maybe Maria can help me uh, with uh, the type of economy that students work like at Ubers and and those uh, 
Uh, service service sector is that what you're saying? Or no, uh, I'm talking about where uh, where uh, workers are becoming contractors, not full time uh, employees. Yeah. Uh, 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 I forgot the yeah, but they no. Yeah, I forgot the words for it, but but basically, a lot of a lot of people prefer to be like a contractors where an accountant would be a contractor working for a, a, a provider where a provider give them the jobs, you know, like give them the task and they basically work on contracts and they make a lot of money that way. And, uh, and, and, and companies uh, actually uh, lower tremendously their costs because you don't have to have a full-time accountant. If an accountant does a job balancing their balance, whatever balance, balance sheet in, in, in like the last 10 days of the month, why would they hire full time for 30 days? So students have to be aware of that. This is where the economy is, is moving to. Uh, those contract jobs were uh, a, fin a, a financial analyst, a business manager, uh, an accountant, even an economist or, or, or other jobs are, are done remotely and, 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 and it's from, from people's home. So that the need for uh, an actual job where you go downtown and, and go to have the office and, and have a full-time job or salary is now diminishing. And, and students have to be aware of that. And, and we have to have those skills where uh, they meet the current job market uh, and the current economy where is, is very, very important to, uh, to, uh, to uh, add those skills and be aware of those skills and master working uh, remotely as far as, you know, full time. Not every job will be remote, but there, there's a tremendous move. And I, when I say the workforce is about 150 million people or 140 million, I would say, one third of that is tremendous. You know, we're talking about 40, 50 million workers uh, are now, uh, uh, you know, have those type of job where it's not a full time job, but they, they do contract. Uh, kind of job and um, and they make a lot more money and they're, they they have that freedom to live anywhere in the United States. So, anyways, I, I over talked here. So, no, you're I'll okay. find that word about the economy. You did good, Sharif, because you kind of did kind of a segue to what I was going to talk about last. So, <laughs> uh, Sharif brought up jobs a lot. So, I just want to say thank you for joining us. And we have one more Path Day session after this where. Maria is going to be presenting the different certificates and programs in business, along with uh, Candace Grist will be there for travel, tourism, and hospitality. But speaking of jobs, um, Spring 2021 Virtual Job Fair, hosted on Handshake, is going to be on April 14th from 1 to 4 p.m., and I definitely recommend Sharif brought up all these jobs. We're going to have jobs listed on there. Um, there'll be chances for internships, connecting you know, what you're learning in classes to actual job markets. So I think it's really important that Sharif brought up this a lot and we actually have an event coming up. So it was a great segue, but thank you so much, uh, Maria and Sharif for all your insight into your fields. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.